Hi, my name is Tim and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be continuing our video series on macros. In our previous video, we learned how to record our steps that we used in SOLIDWORKS to create some code, and then edit that code to create a working macro. In today's case, we're actually going to create a macro from scratch without using the record function at all. Oftentimes, macros can be used to post-process a model, and therefore recording may not be totally applicable. So in our case today, what we're going to do is we're going to write a macro that will rename our constant radius fillets and append their radii to the end of their name. So for example, if this fillet 1 is 10 millimeters, it's going to rename this to fillet 1 space r 10 millimeters. This could be very useful for figuring out which fillets pertain to certain parts of the model, as well as for quick reference of the measurements of the radii while working on the model. So in order to get started, we're just going to hit New Macro here. And we're going to save this onto our desktop and call it Macro 1. And for our module here, we can just rename this. And we'll rename this to Rename Fillet. Just keep in mind you cannot have any spaces, so we'll use underscores instead. And as we have done in our previous video, every time we see a SW app as object, we want to rename this as sldworks.sldworks. .SLD works. And that'll give us the IntelliSense that we are looking for. And we just need to define a couple more variables here. So we'd like to define one that is for the SOLIDWORKS model. So, And we're going to name this as sldworks.modeldoc2. Uh, we'd like to have a variable for to capturing features as well. So, and so we can get started with this. So the first thing we want to do is it has set SOLIDWORKS app as the application of SOLIDWORKS. That's fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set our SOLIDWORKS model to the active document. So. And that way, this will always run on the active window that we're using. And we want to use, uh, we want to set the SOLIDWORKS feature to capture the very first feature. So in order to do that, we're going to use set SOLIDWORKS feature is equal to the SOLIDWORKS model dot first feature. Okay, so once we've set the first feature, what we actually want to do is we want to be able to go through each of the features on the tree and check for the fact that they're fillets. So, first of all, we're going to figure out a way to loop through each of the different features on the tree. So we're going to use what we call a do while loop here. And so we use do while not SOLIDWORKS feature is nothing. And so this is a little bit confusing, but the way that this is structured, it means that as long as the SOLIDWORKS feature is not empty, it'll continue to loop. Now that means that it'll start from the very top because we've already captured this first feature, so it's not empty to start with. And then as we go all the way through the tree, when it hits the bottom, it'll finally be empty when there's no more features left. So we're going to use this and say loop. And so there's our loop. Now. As we're looping through these features, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to check if the feature is actually a fillet. Because if it's only if it's a fillet, then that's when we want to do our post-processing. So we're going to use an if statement here and say if the SOLIDWORKS feature. And we use the get type name to is equal to fillet then. And what this is going to do. We're going to create an end if for ending our if statement here. Is it's going to check for if the feature is indeed a fillet, and if it is, then we are going to execute the code that's in between these two here. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to be able to capture the fillet data and read the radius. Now, in order to do so, we actually need to define a few more variables. So we have a specific variable for this. So we're going to use fillet data as SLD works dot simple fillet feature. 
And so this simple fill feature data is what we're actually going to be able to use to capture the actual fill it uh, definition. Uh, we also want to be able to capture the radius itself. So we want to store the radius into a different variable. And I'd also like a counter for our renaming purposes because one's going to be fill at one, then fill at two, then fill at three, then fill at four. So we just want to make sure that we have a counter that we can do that with as well. And in the main part of the code, I'm going to set the counter to one to start with. Okay, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to set the fillet data variable. And that's equal to the SolidWorks feature dot get definition. And what that'll do is that'll take the fillet feature and dump the definition into our fillet data variable. And we want to read the fillet data variable to actually get the radius. So now we're going to set the radius is equal to the fillet data default radius. like so. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that our default radius is actually in meters. So we're going to multiply this by a thousand. And I'm just going to make a note of that with a comment by hitting the apostrophe here and say multiplied by 1000 because default is meters. So after we've captured the radius like we've done here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to actually set the SOLIDWORKS feature name. So we're going to rename the feature now. And that's what we were looking to do as our entire goal. So we set SOLIDWORKS feature dot name is going to be equal to fill it, as it always would be. And this is where our counter comes in. So we're going to use the ampersand to, to uh, concatenate strings and say that this is going to be counter. and then another ampersand to put our R in here. And then we want to add our radius. And we want to add the millimeter symbol, like so. And so this sets our name to, to fill it x radius of y millimeters. And that's the, f uh, that's the uh, form that we'd like for this. And let me just put this back together by accident. Here we are. And so there we have our code that we're going to rename the fillets. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to roll the counter for it, because we don't want to use the same counter for each, otherwise it's going to name every single one fillet one. So we say counter is equal to counter plus one. The reason we put it inside this if statement here is because we only want to roll the counter forward if we've renamed a fillet. So once we've renamed a fillet, which will happen every time this is a fillet, we're going to roll the counter forward. Now outside of this if, we want to move to the next feature because no matter what, we always want to move to the next feature after checking that first feature. So we're going to go and use SW feet. So set SOLIDWORKS feature is equal to SOLIDWORKS feature dot get next feature. And that will roll our feature forward so that we can move towards the end of the tree. So this is our code. And as simple as that, we're now done this code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this really quickly, and we can close it out, and I'm going to try to run it. So as I run it, you can see now it's renamed my fillets as R10, R25, R10, R5, and R3. So in today's video, we covered how to build a macro from the ground up. For more useful videos like this, subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems channel, and be sure to check out the next part in the macro video series. Thank you for watching.